All right, y'all, I gave in and I did the most cliche YouTuber thing ever. Even more cliche than teasing a secret project that I just can't wait to tell you about. And even more cliche than launching a merch line that is literally just my name on a cheap t-shirt. Now I pulled the ultimate YouTuber cliche. I started a vlog channel. And I've had a few of you ask me over on Instagram why I decided to start a second channel, if it's difficult to maintain two YouTube channels. And if you, depending on your niche and the circumstances and situation of your YouTube channel, should also consider starting a second channel. And that is what we're gonna get into in this video. We're gonna go behind the scenes of why I decided to start a second channel and share the truth behind why so many of us YouTubers end up doing this and hopefully help you decide if it's right for you. Okay, so first I think I should explain what my vlog channel is. If you've been around for a little while, then you've probably heard me talk about it, but I have a second channel that's called Katie and Dan in a Van. And I started it in the summer of 2020 to document me and my partner Dan's journey to becoming van lifers. Now, back in 2020, when I started it, we did not even have a van yet. We didn't have the money to buy a van. It was just kind of a dream that we wanted to pursue. And I also wanted to just capture our adventures and the things that we did in the summer. Because remember, we were coming out of like several months of pretty much being locked inside. And finally things were like opening up a bit and we could go out and like do activities. So I wanted to make the most of summer. And I thought that vlogging would be a fun way to do it. So that's how it started and then since then we did buy a van and I documented our conversion process and our four month journey across the US in our van and I continue to post travel and van life videos over there. So that's my vlog channel. Of course, you can check it out if you want, but let's talk about why YouTubers in general start vlog channels or second channels. Like why not just post it all in one place? So what's the point in having two separate YouTube channels? Well, the short answer is the algorithm. It's the algorithm, but it's also more than that. It's really the audience. In general, I think when we're talking about different social media platforms and you hear people talk about the algorithm, I think it's an important mindset shift to just swap out the word algorithm for the word audience because ultimately all of these different algorithms are trying to just show the audience what they want. So it's all kind of one and the same, but the point is, it ultimately comes down to the algorithm. To understand why it's a helpful hack to start a second channel, you need to first understand how the YouTube algorithm works in general. You can grow on YouTube or you can find an audience for your content in really two main ways, through search and through recommendations. Basically people can find your content through typing something in the search bar and finding your video, or they might find it on their homepage or in their suggested video through the recommendations algorithm. In order to do either of these two things, the YouTube algorithm needs to understand what kind of content you're making so that they can determine who to show it to. When we're talking about search, they do that through the title, the description, the tags, the SEO optimization that you do for your video. And for recommendations, they also do that through the metadata associated with your video, but also who else is watching it, like who your audience tends to be on your channel. One of the best ways for the algorithm to determine who to show your videos to is if that's a consistent group of people with a consistent sort of set of interests. So the best way to optimize this is by having consistent content on your channel. This all also has a more practical implication, which I think is even more intuitive than all this algorithm talk. And that is again, when we start to think about audience instead of just algorithm. And that is that your audience is ultimately going to come to you for one thing, or maybe like a few different things. As a YouTube creator, you become known for a specific theme or topic or type of audience that you speak to. And so you want to keep your content on your channel consistent with that. Essentially, if you've been posting one type of thing on your channel for years, the YouTube algorithm has gotten used to what kind of videos you make and who those videos are for. Your audience has gotten used to what kind of videos you make and what they come to you for. If you start to deviate from that and post something entirely new, let's say vlogs, for instance, most likely those videos are going to tank. Sadly. <laughs> 
I think this all makes a lot of sense even if you come at it from just a viewer perspective. For example, I watch Kara and Nate for exciting travel vlogs and challenge videos. I watch Elena Tabor for aesthetic travel and lifestyle content. And I watch Jack in the books for thoughtful book reviews and recommendations. If any of these people would post like a makeup tutorial or like a fitness workout video, probably wouldn't click on it because A, that's not what I subscribe to them for, and B, I just don't watch a lot of those types of videos in general. In the same way, for a very personal example from the creator perspective, in the summer of 2021, when I kind of sort of had a mental breakdown and decided I wasn't gonna talk about social media anymore, I started posting van life vlogs and like fashion videos to this channel and uh, y'all did not watch them. And I'll be honest, at the time I was pretty like upset and like resentful about that. I was like, I built this audience, why don't they watch my videos? But now like I fully get it and I, I don't blame you at all if you didn't watch those videos because that's not what you've subscribed to me for. And so because of my understanding of how the algorithm and audiences work on YouTube and my own experience with my flop era of summer 2021, I've come to the conclusion that having a second channel for a different style or theme of content is really, really valuable for creators. You can grow a lot faster, or in my case, like grow at all. Like I've never had success growing a channel that isn't a specific focus. You can kind of think about it like TV shows, right? You sort of want to have a different channel for each of the different shows that you're producing. So this brings us back to our original question of should you start a vlog channel? Do you need to have a second channel on YouTube? As always, it depends, but I formulated a list of a few questions that you need to answer if you are considering it. The first question is, can you integrate vlogs into your current niche? Essentially, does vlog content really constitute its entire own separate channel, or would it make sense to just include it on your existing channel? For example, here on this channel where I talk mainly about content creation and social media marketing advice, every so often I'll make a video that's like a day in the life of a full-time content creator, or a week in my life as a online business owner. That's one way I can integrate the style of vlogging into content that makes sense on my channel. There's a very clear overlap there, a very clear integration between what the niche of my channel is and vlog style content. But if you're currently making videos on a channel that's all about watercolor painting and your dream is to make vlogs about like taking your dog for a walk, then there might not be that connection there. In my case, van life and travel vlog content was just too different from my Instagram and YouTube advice, so it didn't work out on the same channel. And it's not all about the niche or the topic necessarily, it's about the audience. Like, is the audience of your channel going to be open to this new topic? So like, for example, I've talked a lot about Instagram advice in the past, now I share more YouTube tips. And that makes sense because my audience was content creators and content creators are gonna be interested in Instagram and YouTube. But those content creators are not necessarily interested in van life. Whereas over on my van life channel, I might share some videos that are about trips that I take that aren't in my van, but it still makes sense because the audience is travel enthusiasts. So you just need to think about like, it's not necessarily is the topic an exact match for my current topic. It's more like, is the audience there for that kind of thing? Okay, question number two. Do you really want to continue with your current niche or does it just make more sense to pivot? Maybe you're just over the niche that you're in right now and you would like to switch to vlogging or lifestyle content. If that's the case, then like, you might as well just pivot. And whether that pivot is on your existing channel or if you feel like it's way too different, just starting a brand new channel and only continuing with that one, that's okay too. If you could see yourself creating the second channel and then just not even wanting to maintain your main channel, then there's no point in setting it up as a secondary one. You might as well just move forward and, and make new content. In my case, this channel is literally my livelihood. Not only does it contribute to my creator business, but it's also like the main like lead generator for my agency, Creatorly Media. So when I'm considering my kind of next steps of where I'm going with content creation, um, I'm not just gonna like give this up because um, I need it for my job. But also at the end of the day, like I'm a social media and like creator economy nerd. So I would always come back to these topics anyway and I wanna keep sharing about them. So it made sense for me to create a second channel then instead of just 
pivoting this channel to van life content and never looking back. Cause like y'all I've got a, a mortgage to pay. So, you know. <laughs> okay. And the third question is what's your goal with this second channel? For a lot of creators who start a vlogging channel, the reason they do it is because they are making content for their MVP ride or die subscribers who are gonna watch content from them no matter what it's about. So in a lot of these cases, you see people make channels, like for example, mine would be like Katie Steckley vlogs or whatever because it's it's literally just meant to be their catch-all channel for whatever they wanna make and then for their you know bestie subscribers to go follow them there. Now, if your goal is to start a successful channel in its own right, I wouldn't really recommend taking that path. As you've probably observed, that is not the way that I went and that's because I wanted my second channel to be able to stand on its own. Right now, the subscribers of Katie and Dan in a van are mostly y'all, my besties over here that like the content I make enough to want to watch my other content or just so happen to be interested in van life as well. But my goal with the channel is that at some point I could break out of the sphere of just people who are already subscribed to me and start to find new people who are just interested in like van life and travel content. So that's something to consider if you are thinking based on those previous questions, yeah, I do wanna start a second channel. Do you want it to be just essentially just for fun for your audience on your channel, but just like kind of a small subset of them, then you could make it kind of a generic vlog channel. Or if you're wanting to kind of reach a different audience or do something different than your main channel, think about how you might brand it and kind of set it up for success that way. So ask yourself those questions when you're thinking about setting up a vlog channel, because here's the thing, it's a lot of work. Keeping up two channels is pretty much double the work. I mean, obviously you're posting more videos most likely. Though if we're honest right now, like my Katie and Dan in a van channel, it's just purely a hobby. It's a passion project. It's something I do for fun. I obviously don't make any money off of it right now. It's not monetized. And I also don't post there overly consistently. Like I just basically make vlogs when I go on a trip or have something to post about. But my hope is that in the future, I could find like a work-life balance that would allow me to make more content over there. And who knows, maybe someday it would become, you know, monetizable, but for now, it's just for fun. And that's the thing with any YouTube channel, you have to be willing to accept that it might be just for fun for like a long time before you get to the point where you could turn it into a business. I've had this YouTube channel since 2011 and um, I only really turned it into a viable business in like, 2020. So there you go. If you really are serious about growing your YouTube channel, then it's important to not only think about the strategy on a channel level, like we've been discussing in this video, but also thinking about making every single video that you produce as engaging and valuable as possible so that you can reach the audience that you want and turn them into subscribers. And I do this for each of my videos by working through a template. It's my viral YouTube script template. It's actually like available on my website if you want to check it out. But I also made a whole video walking you through how to create create videos using this template that can help you engage your audience, keep them interested till the end and turn them into subscribers so that you can get more views and grow. So make sure you check out that video next so that you can learn all about that. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I hope that you're having adventures and following all of your YouTube dreams and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.